Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 18th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're still tracking our two storms, now Hurricane Grace in the northwestern Caribbean and strengthening as it moves westward, and Tropical Storm Henri also strengthening as it moves to the southwest of Bermuda. We're going to tackle Grace first. This is the zoomed-in visible satellite loop this morning. Now, yesterday when we made our video, it was over Jamaica. It came off, has been moving west-northwestward, and has been getting better organized as it moves just to the south of Grand Cayman. And you can see in the texture of the satellite picture, there's some spiral curvature to the clouds in this inner core, indicating that there's a more organized set of convective banding wrapping around the center, and wind shear doesn't seem to be having much of an impact on the core of the storm right now. And so intensification has been occurring during the overnight hours. And if we look at recon data, we'll see that the plane has been flying through and finding pretty stiff wind on the north and northeast side of the center. Everything in purple here is hurricane force wind at the level that the plane is flying. And there are estimates that the surface wind may also be near hurricane force. And so the National Hurricane Center has upgraded this to a hurricane with sustained winds of about 75 miles per hour, and we've seen videos of tropical storm conditions lashing the Cayman Islands in recent hours. Now, the pressure over the last few passes from the plane has been rather steady at about 994 or 995 millibars, and it hasn't been falling very quickly during this uh, recon mission. And this indicates that at the moment the storm is not rapidly intensifying and is organizing in a more gradual way. And one thing we can notice here is in water vapor satellite imagery, while the shear is not impacting Grace very much, which was the expectation that it would fare okay in the face of the shear, the little trough here aloft also has dry air associated with it. So you can see that tongue of darker gray here extending past the tip of Cuba, and it's starting to kind of wrap around the western side of Grace's circulation. And if you interpolate beneath the cirrus clouds because they kind of obscure where the dry air is, the edge of it is actually encroaching now on the deep convection within the outer bands and even some of the inner bands of Hurricane Grace. And so it's possible that some dry air entrainment is starting to wrap around into the core. And if we look for clues in the visible satellite loop, we will actually see at the end here some indication of an outflow boundary or two on the very western side, indicating collapsing thunderstorms and a cold pool of air hitting the ocean surface and spreading outward due to some of this dry air coming in and causing some of these thunderstorms to evaporate on the western side of the core. It's possible that this is getting in to more inner parts of the storm and helping to limit the intensification rate right now. So if there's some good news for Mexico, because this is heading that way toward the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, it's that this dry air may hopefully limit the rate of intensification over the next uh, day or so as the storm approaches. Now back at the water vapor loop, the steering for this is pretty set in stone at this point. We'll see that there's some general clockwise rotation over the Gulf of Mexico, indicating that there is a ridge of high pressure that we've talked about for the last few days, directing traffic all westward here. And so we're expecting a general track near the northern Yucatan across that landmass, and then on to the other part of eastern Mexico off the screen on this particular chart. And the National Hurricane Center forecast has been fairly steady here for the last day or so. And right now, Grace has about 24 hours left over water before a landfall Thursday morning on the northeastern coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, right now expected to be just south of Cozumel and Playa del Carmen. And for now, looking like it will stay to the north of areas like Chetumal, farther south and south of areas like Cancun, although that north side of the storm does have the strongest wind, so even just a slight nudge northward could bring uh, pretty bad conditions to the area near Cancun. So we're looking at a hurricane warning across this whole section of coastline, tropical storm warnings slightly farther south, currently none for Belize, and then tropical storm warnings along the northern coast. Now this is expected to cross the Yucatan in fairly short order. Now normally when storms cross the Yucatan, they get disrupted to an extent that it typically takes about a day for the storm's core structure to recover to the point where it can re-strengthen significantly after weakening due to the crossing of the land mass. Most models agree that this reorganization will happen maybe even a little bit quicker than usual, possibly because the storm crosses in fairly short order, just about 12 hours here. 
And so we may see some restrengthening pretty quickly on the other side, but since it won't have that much time over the Bay of Campeche before its second landfall somewhere south of Tampico, Mexico, uh, we're likely to see uh, something of hurricane intensity, but probably not major hurricane intensity. So winds between 75 and 90 miles per hour may be possible here. That's the best estimate right now, uh, but probably nothing that much stronger. At least that's the hope. Uh, but this will be making a second landfall on Friday evening or early Saturday morning uh, on the eastern coastline of Mexico, and that's been a pretty steady forecast for the last while. So stay safe in Mexico and the Cayman Islands, and there's even a tropical storm watch for western Cuba, possibility for elevated winds there. Okay, we're going to shift gears now and talk about Tropical Storm Henri up to the southwest of Bermuda, which is right here. This is the system we've been tracking, doing this looping track down from the north and now moving westward and expected to loop back toward the north over the next few days. And we've been talking about it for a little while now, dealing with some northerly shear, and the battle between the storm and the shear is determining the short-term forecast. And right now, if we look at visible imagery, we'll see that there's a pretty organized convective structure. We've got a core that consists of deep convective bursts happening on the eastern side of what is likely at least the center at mid-levels. Now the vortex is likely tilted somewhat north to south because there is some northerly shear currently present. You'll see cloud elements right about here in the loop moving in this direction toward the core upper level cloud elements like this moving southward indicating that push so the surface center may be slightly offset to the north of where the mid-level center is difficult to tell though without a recon aircraft to go directly measure that but it's been tracking generally westward over the last several hours and nhc currently estimates that this is a tropical storm with maximum winds of about 65 miles per hour and for the moment the storm is holding together now if we look at the water vapor satellite imagery we'll see that a bout of stronger shear is just beginning to arrive we talked about how this ridge off the east coast of the u.s would bring down some northeasterly flow starting at about today and shear has been fairly moderate over the last 24 hours but is about to get a bit stronger as Henri continues to move toward the west or west southwest and this stronger bout of northeasterly wind begins to hit it from the north side. Again, you can see some of these cloud elements underneath the outflow are already coming down from the northeast, hitting the storm underneath of the outflow, which you can see expanding above it, the milky white feathery cirrus, but the clouds under that are already pushing in from the opposite direction. So we are getting shear here. And this has been important for a couple of reasons. And we've talked about during the last couple of videos, Henri's track has been correcting more to the south and more to the west, and this is because a lot of models struggle with this situation because this shear pushing on it tends to put the convection on the southern side and kind of tug the vortex farther and farther south, farther and farther south, and as long as Henri holds together and doesn't decouple, this is going to result in models correcting farther south and west, and this is what we've seen over the last couple of days. So I'll show you on the H wharf as an illustration of the upper level flow. This is the 200 millibar wind. There's Henri today. Here's that northeasterly flow coming around the ridge and you can see it's moving into this belt of stronger flow. And so the biggest test of Henri will be during the next day or two under the strongest shear. And there are indications from most modeling that Henri won't strengthen an appreciable amount through Thursday morning as the shear will likely continuously try to tilt the vortex over. But since Henri is already quite strong and robust, it's unlikely to decouple entirely and dissipate like models expected a couple of days ago. And so we're likely to just see a continuing tropical storm and maintaining a fairly steady intensity over the next while is currently the best estimate. Now by Friday, Thursday evening or Friday, what happens is Henri moves through this northeasterly belt of flow and eventually it's going to move into the axis of this ridge and shear is going to decrease again. So by Friday, we'll find Henri centered more under this ridge axis, and we now have a trough digging into the northeastern U.S., starting to bring southwesterly flow on the other side. So all of a sudden, by this time, shear will relax, and Henri will find itself in a fairly favorable environment overall over warm water with light shear aloft. This is likely to bring on a period of intensification, and Henri, if it isn't a hurricane by this time, will likely become one as it begins to turn toward the north. This trough will also impart more of a southerly steering flow, which will cause the storm to turn to the east of the Carolinas and start moving northward and strengthening as it does so. 
So now the track forecast comes into play here, and this is the GFS mid-level chart showing uh, basically the, the vortex tilt as we go forward. Uh, if we look at the GFS, we'll see that the deep green here continues to be mostly on the southern side of where the vortex is due to that northerly shear over the next couple of days. Now this is the model correction that I talked about. If we look at the last couple of model runs, We'll see that what the GFS was doing was showing more decoupling of a weaker storm and the mid-level and the surface center became very, very separated on earlier model forecasts yesterday and the day before. But since Henri has been doing a better job of holding together in the face of the shear, the model has been correcting toward a more stacked vortex that is now farther south compared to several runs ago when it was farther north, as you can see here at the same time. So the GFS is correcting toward more of a southwestern dip in the track. So you can see it digs all the way down here before turning. This is still going to be east of the Carolinas, but it is going to get a lot closer to the eastern U.S. than the model thought during the last couple of days. And at this point, when it starts turning north, now, as we talked about yesterday, we have to deal with the weird traffic pattern to its north. And if we look at the 500 millibar chart at this time, we'll find that as Henri is beginning its turn, we have an upper level low pressure system over Ohio, and then to its north, a ridge that is translating toward the east. And because Henri is digging farther south and west before making this turn, this move northward comes a little bit later than it did in prior model forecasts. And so now the alignment with this trough and ridge couplet means that the steering flow is out of the south or south-southeast for a time as Henri comes toward the north. And so now we're starting to get model runs that are much closer to the coastline of New England. And so on this particular GFS run, for instance, this starts to make a move toward the coastline of New England on the western side of this ridge, which just happens to be moving by at the right time to move Henri far enough west to threaten land. Now this is far from a guaranteed track at this point as models are still shifting around and we've seen some pretty major changes since yesterday and the shift has been toward the west. But I wanna stress again that this pattern is fairly complex and models have disagreed on the timing of the trough over the Midwest, this associated ridge northeast of the Great Lakes and the trough here to its south and then of course the position of Henri itself. And so the relative positions and timing as Henri merges into this traffic pattern is going to matter a lot. And we could see a variety of outcomes here that uh, range from a track into New England and bending toward the west to a track that does some sort of a loop here offshore and then moves east northeast because as this ridge moves eastward, this is a, a classic case where the upper low to the west could capture Henri for a brief time and then it could do a loop and then get released, so to speak, and move northeast after stalling for a little while. We've seen that with historical storms in similar patterns like this. And finally, we could just have a track that gradually moves northeast well offshore because if Henri's timing is such that this ridge has already moved off to the east, Henri may just calmly follow the western boundary and move well offshore of the United States. So there's a variety of outcomes here. We're talking about a five days at this point when the GFS shows it making landfall. It's about Monday morning. Still a long time to watch this one. And right now the NHC forecast remains offshore and has shifted significantly farther toward the coastline than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was closer to the eastern edge of this cone. So we have seen a shift here toward the west and we could see further westward shifts. Now we're bringing Massachusetts into the cone. But again, a lot of uncertainty here and lots of changes have been occurring in the last day or so. So just something to, to keep an eye on and make sure you have some sort of mental plan ready for action just in case we get an elevated wind event and coastal flooding event coming toward New England. One thing to keep in mind is that the Gulf Stream runs through here and that's always something to, to, to keep in your mind as a storm is coming northward. If we look at the h dwarf sea surface temperature forecast, We'll see that the, the Gulf Stream with warm water, this tongue extends out to the northeast of Cape Hatteras and is at about the latitude of Maryland and Delaware, but north of that line there's a lot of cool water. So in theory, if a storm did cross north of the Gulf Stream, it would weaken if it spends any time over the cold water prior to making it to the coastline. And in the case of this particular steering pattern that we were just discussing, 
There's no big jet stream here. There's no large scale long wave trough. And for that reason, Henri is not racing northward. The worst New England storms in history are the ones that accelerate and move very quickly so that they have no time to weaken over the cold water before making it to New England. In this particular case, models seem to agree that Henri will not really be moving that fast and could even slow down on approach to the coastline if it is going to make a landfall. And so with any, with any luck here, Henri will be weakening substantially prior to nearing the coast. But we have a long time yet to watch this one. The details here are still very murky. And at this point, uh, the official forecast is still offshore. Just something to watch here in case we continue to see that track getting closer. And then, of course, the remnants could impact places like southeastern Canada down the line as well. But we'll be looking at that as we head into the weekend, and we'll see exactly where this turn occurs and when it occurs. And at that point, we'll probably have a better idea of what we're looking at as the storm comes north. That's it for now, everyone. Thanks for watching.